Good day, students. Mass time once again, dividing fractions one. Today's lesson focusing on dividing fractions, we'll be looking at two main success criteria. Knowing the process of keep, change, and flip, I will explain that in due course. And the second strategy, is using equivalent fractions to help us divide fractions. Now, a few key terms or key ideas to note. The reciprocal, and another word for reciprocal is flip or invert, means we turn our fraction upside down. You swapping the numerator and the denominator. For example, the reciprocal of A divided by B is B divided by A. So the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. So for example, the reciprocal of 3 over 5 is 5 over 3. We'll talk more about this in the course of the lesson, but keep note of that. Now, dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. For example, 15 divided by 3 15 divided by 3 is the same as 15 multiplied by 1 over 3. That gives you a result of 5. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by half. If you are dividing by 2, it's the same as multiplying by half. When asked to divide by a fraction, Instead, choose to multiply by the fraction's reciprocal. That will tie in with that strategy of keep, change, flip. And I'll explain that in a moment. Therefore, to divide by A over B, we multiply by B over A. When dividing mixed numbers, we must change them first into improper fractions. Let's get going. Let's have some practice with how to find the inverse or reciprocal or what I would simply call flip. So for example, one over four, the inverse becomes four over one. So 2 over 5, the inverse would simply be 5 over 2. Remember, we are looking at the inverse. You turn it upside down. That goes up and that one comes down. So 4 over 9 would be 9 over 4. And finally, 7 over 12 will become 12 over 7. We're going to apply this knowledge in solving problems involving division. So now we have 9 divided by 3 over 8. Now, as you've seen before, when we're doing multiplication, the number 9 is simply 9 divided by 1. So this is the same as 9 over 1 divided by 3 over 8. Now, this is where our first strategy comes in, the success criteria 1 which is the process of keep, change, and flip. 
KCF. So we're going to keep this, we're going to change that, and we're going to flip this KCF. So this would be 9 divided by 1 multiplied by 8 divided by 3. Remember, it is keep, change, flip. We're changing the division into a multiplication. So this gives us, now with multiplication, we know the rules from our previous lessons. Multiply the numerators together. Multiply the denominators together. And then what do you do? We look for common factors by focusing on HCF. So we can see that this 3 can go into that 9. So 3 will go there one time and go into 9 three times. So for the numerators, you got 3 multiplied by 8. And for the denominators, you got 1 multiplied by 1. And that's simply equal to 24 divided by 1. And 24 divided by 1 is simply equal to 24. Simply equal to 24. So remember, the strategy is keep, change, flip. Your first fraction stays the same. The sign changes into multiplication. And as a result of that, your second fraction is turned upside down. Flip or the reciprocal is used. Right. Now, let's see how we apply success criteria two, which is making use of equivalent fractions. So as you can see, we have the same question, 9 divided by 3 over 8. Let's suppose that you do not want to apply the keep, change, flip strategy. So you want to use equivalent fractions, which we've already learned. Well, this 9 already we know is 9 divided by 1 divided by 3 over 8 just as before we want a denominator what will be the lcm we have 1 and 8 so lcm is equal to 8 so the first fraction is being written with a denominator of 8 and we are dividing by 3 divided by 8. Well, that was 1 and it became 8. We multiply by 8. So we have to multiply this by 8. 8 times 9 will give you 72. So you can see now because this is divided by 8 and that's also divided by 8 then all that we have is we have 72 divided by 3. And 72 divided by 3, that gives you 24. Because 24 times 3 is 72. 3 into 7 would be 2 times, remaining 1. And 3 into 12 is 4. So both methods give you the same result. If I can recap, in the first method, we used the strategy of keep, change, and flip. And if the flipping is too much for you, then utilize your understanding of equivalent fractions. Let's write both fractions with the same denominator and the division is simply the numerators. Let's have more examples. We have 5 over 8 divided by 3. 
Now, as you can see, the first two examples we've done using success criteria one and two, we had a whole number being divided by a fraction. This second example, we have a fraction being divided by a whole number. So we're using the success criteria one, which is keep, change, and flip, KCF. So I'll go to the next step and I'll write my five over eight and I'm dividing by three, which becomes three over one. Remember three over one is the same as three. But by doing so, I can now tell myself with this strategy, I'm going to keep that, I'm going to change that, and I'm going to flip that. So I have five over eight multiplied by one over three, because that has to be flipped. And as we know from multiplications of fractions, multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, see if there are common factors. If there are no common factors, carry on with your calculation. So five times one will give us five and eight times three will give us 24. And that's our final answer. Let's look at the second strategy. Same question, five over eight divided by three. So I write that as five over eight divided by three over one. Now, immediately you will see that focusing on the denominators, the LCM, will be eight for eight and one. So the five over eight would remain the same. And I'm dividing this by something divided by eight. Well, it was one, so I had to multiply by eight. And so I have to multiply that also by eight. And three times eight is 24. Because they are both divided by 8, I just simply focus on the numerators, which will be 5 divided by 24. And 5 divided by 24 is simply 5 over 24. Simply 5 over 24. So this is how we use equivalent fractions to help us solve the same problem. So if I can recap again, there are two main success criteria. At the end of the lesson, you should know how to use the keep, change, flip method, or how to use the equivalent fractions method so that you express both fractions with the same denominator and then you focus on the numerators to work out the division which will be a division of two whole numbers basically right let's have some practice questions again so here in this question the tip given to you is change the division to multiply and write the inverse of the second. That is using the first strategy, which is keep, change, flip method. So we have the first one done for us, which was six divided by three over five. The six is written as six divided by one, divided by three, divided by five. Now, we keep, we keep that, we change that, and we flip this. This must be flipped. So if you do that, you get 
multiply five over three. Now the three can go into six two times. So your numerators are now two times five and your denominator is one times one and two times five is 10 and one times one is one. So 10 over one, which is 10. That's your answer. <clears throat> For this step, we write eight over one divided by two over three. Again, we are going to keep this. We're going to change that and we're going to flip that. So you have eight over one, multiply three over two. Two will go here one and two will go into the eight four times. So your numerator, you've got four times three and the denominator is one times one and four times three will give you 12. One times one will give you one. So the answer is 12. Both questions have been solved using the first strategy. We could have as well have used the second strategy as well to solve them. So, Let's work through these ones. And this question is asking us write the inverse. We're just writing the inverse. So seven, remember seven is the same as seven over one. It's seven over one. So the inverse would be one over seven the e versus one over seven question b we've got 10 so 10 is the same as 10 over one and so the inverse would be one over 10. now be very careful this is one three quarters you have to write that as an improper fraction, which is going to be four times one plus three or divided by four. And four times one is four plus three, that gives you seven over four. So the inverse would be four over seven. And for that mixed number, again, you need to write it as eight times two plus seven or divided by eight. So we are dividing by eight and two times eight is 16 plus seven, that's 23. So you have 23 over eight, and so that would be 8 over 23. Right. The three house blocks shown in the diagram, I mean, the three house blocks shown have been bought by the same owner, by one owner and turned into two larger blocks of equal size one ha that's equal to one hectare that's the abbreviation for hectare so in this question basically all that we need to do is to find the sum of these things and divide by two so we have three over eight plus half plus five over eight. You need a common denominator, in this case, eight. The LCM will be eight. 
So that will remain three because we didn't do anything to that fraction. But for here, it was two is becoming eight. We multiply by four. So multiply that also by four. And so that gives us four. This we didn't do anything. So that's five. So that gives us three plus four. That gives us seven plus five. That is 12 over eight. Now, we don't need to simplify this because at this point, we know that this is the total value of all these blocks put together. We have to divide this by two to get the two new larger blocks. Because we're dividing by two, I can write this again as 12 over 8 divided by 2 over 1. Remember, it is keep, change, flip. So 12 over 8 multiplied by 1 over 2. What can we do? 4 would go here two times. 4 would go there three. So we have 3 times 1 over 2 times 2, which is equal to 3 over 4. So each one will be 3 over 4 hectares the new blocks, three over four hectares. So we circle that, that will be our answer. Don't be distracted by that. When you added everything together, that 12 over eight is equal to one and a half if you simplify. But that's for the whole three blocks together. It says the size of each larger block, that each larger block will be three quarters of a hectare. Final question. Here is Gabby's work on a fraction division problem. Three divided by four, and that's what Gabby did. And Gabby got an answer of three over four. That's Gabby's work. Now, Natalie, this is what Natalie did, and Natalie got 12. But Gabby is surprised and says, 12 is way too big and an answer. That can't be right. Your task is to find out which of these two is correct and which of the two is wrong. Explain what the other person has done wrong. Well, as you look at this problem, Gabby started off with 3 divided by 1 over 4 and went on to say this is 3 divided by 4. That's where the mistake took place. So that is wrong. From this, it doesn't lead you to 3 divided by 4. So that's where the mistake took place. Let's look at Natalie's work. We have 3 divided by a quarter. Now, if you look at that carefully, this is equal to 3 over 1 divided by 1 over 4. So, so far, so good by Natalie. Now, if you continue, remember it is keep change and flip so 3 over 1 multiply by 4 over 1 and that will be equal to 3 times 4 over 1 times 1 and this will give you 12 over 1 and that is equal to 12 so Natalie is correct and Gabby is wrong.
Well done, everybody. That's the end of today's lesson. To recap, we've been looking at dividing fractions. Whether it's a whole number being divided by a fraction or a fraction being divided by a whole number or a fraction being divided by a fraction. We have two strategies. Keep, change, flip. Or the second strategy is finding the LCM and equivalent fractions and then performing the division. We've seen both strategies and we'll be using them again in our next lesson on dividing fractions. This time, most of the emphasis will be on dividing two fractions and dividing mixed numbers and improper fractions. Our B and A grade kind of questions will be based on our ability to divide mixed numbers. Thank you. It's a wrap for today. Well done, everybody. Any questions, any issues, please have your posting on Google Classroom. Let's have a discussion there as well. Please focus also on the accompanying companion worksheets posted on Google Classroom for additional work. In addition to doing your online homework on mymassonline.com.au, your online homework, please. Let's get doing that. Thank you.